It's a cartoon for tweens about biblical themes. They produce little plays, they get carried away. A flamingo, a sock, yeah, most things can talk. Connect. There's Tina and Joey and Becky and Todd. There's Lena and Jerry, they're already on fire. They still find a way to learn more about God. God. Ancient Jerusalem lay under siege by the feared armies of Babylon. We join our hero, King Zedekiah, as he inspires the Israelite soldiers. Whew, man, we are outmatched. But there is hope, King Zedekiah. Oh, I wish there was. But Babylon has Jerusalem surrounded, literally surrounded. Do you think they realize how short on food we are in here? I think that's the point of a siege. If they keep this up, we're going to have to evacuate the city. Uh-huh. The Babylonians! They've broken through our meager defenses! Let's get out of here! King Zedekiah, you and the Israelite people are sentenced to exile in Babylon. Watch, Zedekiah, watch as your city burns to the ground. No! Becky, setting aside the fact that I've had countless opportunities to ask this question throughout the rehearsal process, can you explain to me what all the fuss was over a Babylonian invasion? The Israelites were exiled. So what's wrong with an X-shaped island? Exile. Like they were banished from their homeland, forced to live under a foreign king, persecuted for practicing their beliefs. Oh. How did you perform that whole show without understanding that? I'm a natural, but it still doesn't add up. Babylon was a richer, more powerful country. If anything, it was progress for the Israelites. It's like us entering middle school this year. Fifth grade was great, but sixth grade is shaping up to be even greater. Sure, we were forced to abandon all we held dear, and yes, we lost many of our dear friends who, due to district divisions, must attend Goldwater East, and yes, the upperclassmen mock us for our haircuts, tennis shoes, and t-shirt logos. My locker combination continues to elude me, and the principal thinks my name is Kirsten. Todd, when are you getting to the benefits of middle school? That, Joey, is what I would like to know. Oh, it just seemed like at the beginning you were saying you liked middle school. Oh, I love it. I love middle school. I love it. I love middle school. I love it. Love middle school. Todd? Yes, Becky? Do you hate middle school? I hate middle school. I hate it. I hate it! Back in primary school, I was a big fish in a little pond. Now I'm like a fish in a parking lot. Most days, I can't even find my homeroom. I just give up and sit on the floor until the hall monitor finds me. Everything all right? I can't find room 201. She gave me this whistle to help her find me when I get lost. How do you do it, Beck? How do you keep it all so put together? Todd, just because I'm getting good grades doesn't mean that this is easy for me. I mean, look at my fingernails. Becky, you don't have fingernails. Exactly. Announcing the imminent arrival of Principal Goodspeed. Hello. Hello, Goodspeed. How are you? Hello, Goodspeed. Hello, Principal Hello, Goodspeed. Hello, Goodspeed. Hello, Hello. Hello. Hello there, Becky, Tina, Joey, Lena. Kirsten. Hello, Hi, Principal Hello, Goodspeed. Principal Goodspeed. Hello, Principal Goodspeed. Children, I wanted to congratulate you on a stunning performance. Johnson Middle School is lucky to have such talented young people. Thank, Thank you, you, Principal. Principal. Your play raised a lot of issues that hit close to home. I just transferred over from Goldwater East this year, and I'm finding Johnson Middle School to be a confusing and scary place. Really? Remember when the Babylonians gouged out King Zedekiah's eyes? Well, when my vice principal lectures me on standard procedure in front of the entire administrative staff, I feel like he's gouging my eyes out. Uh, metaphorically. But, Principal, the Israelites' exile in Babylon helped them to renew and deepen the relationship with God. Exactly right, Becky. And your play helped remind me of that. No matter what, God is with you every step of the way. Wait, was that what the play was about? Yes, indeed, Kirsten. Life is full of constant change. And as you grow, you'll have to find your way over and over again. Thank you again, children. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a bus to catch. Uh, how do I get out of this building? I'll field this one. Right 
this way. Thank you, children. All right, team. We're all set up to perform a preview of our newest show, Diaspora, for our new school. Now, how do we get the entire student body in one place at one time? I will get the entire student body in one place at one time. How? Just set up for the preview of Diaspora in the main parking lot at 2.15 tomorrow. It's go time! Is that the fire alarm? Attention Johnson Middle School! We are the After School Theater Club and we perform weekly at the theater across the street. All right guys, I did my part. Don't blow it last minute. Who is responsible for this? Hello, I am Mr. Giroffoli. Welcome to detention. No one may say anything. No one may read anything. No one may put their head down. No questions. Hannah here was talking out of turn. Always room for one more. Psst, I heard you got detention. I took a dive for support. I've never been disciplined. Beck, calm down. How can I be calm when the theater is dark? Children. Why are we breaking the only rule governing us? Todd was just saying how great detention is. Exactly, Mr. Giroffoli. And I was wondering if I could use my time here to work on my presentation on the importance and social relevance of detention. Go on. I propose a presentation celebrating the history, legacy, and future of this noble punitive measure. Finally! A young man with ambition. Such a complex subject cannot be tackled by one man alone. Detention requires a team of researchers. Say, Becky, Lena, Hannah, Tina, and Joey. I grant this request. But you must all work independently, and there must be no talking. We'd have it no other way. Anna here decided she can chew gum in class. Always room for one more. We're ready to present, Mr. Giroffoli. Where can we set up the projector? Detention is something the entire student body ought to experience. You present to the whole school in the cafetorium. Ahem. <clears throat> Detention. Webster defines detention as follows. One, the act of detaining. Two, the state of being detained. Three, the withholding of what belongs to or is claimed by another. One of the earliest recorded examples of detention includes the Israelites' exile from the Promised Land and subsequent scattering throughout the nation of Babylon. We will explore this early form of detention for the next two hours. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Diaspora! We join our heroes, the Israelites, as they trust God for salvation, even as they name their suffering. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall of my detention. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me because of detention. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed by detention. Spread across the nations, Israel grows from a people of the land to a people of the book. The Torah. The Torah unites us as a people in exile. As long as we carry the word, we carry God with us in detention. In conclusion, the people of Judah relied on scripture to inform their identity and purpose as a people in detention. Of course, this is not the only example of detention, but those examples must be left for another day. Thank you.
detention for everyone. Oh, so great to finally be out of detention. <laughs> yeah. But why did Mr. Giraffoli keep Todd in detention for another two weeks? I think he's grooming Todd to one day take over as head of detention. I dub thee Deputy of Detention. It's all I've ever wanted. Uh, so, can't wait to get back to doing theater. I just hope the theater's okay. We've been gone for nearly two weeks. Hello? Hello? Jerry? I'll hit the lights. Larry, who do you think has to clean this up? Well, these kids are not intruders, they are the actors. Um, Jerry, why is there a baboon hanging in the light grid? Well, his name's Larry. He's the new technical director. I didn't approve a new technical director. It's no longer your place to approve, Becky. Mr. Anderton, the theater's owner, hired a new artistic director for the theater. What? You kids were in detention for two whole weeks. The theater can't be without artistic supervision for that long. Anything could happen. Like what? Well, for starters, the stage left half burned to the ground. How on earth did that happen? There were no company members around to witness it. Who is the new artistic director? What are their qualifications? Are they older than me? Or younger than me? Couldn't tell you. He hasn't come out of his office. He only issues orders through proclamations posted on the proclamation board. The great and wise Mr. Anderton has given me artistic leadership over his theater, and he has appointed me the task of rebuilding it. I turn the task over to you, the theater company. Grab a hammer. Any of you may help in the reconstruction. Signed, B. We're supposed to rebuild the theater ourselves? I don't know anything about construction. I'm six. Guys, this is our home. We owe it to the space to return it to its former glory. And don't worry, you kids have got some assistance. A group of kind-hearted volunteers arrived yesterday to help. Call themselves the Enemies of the Theater. Oh, there they are right now. Uh, the Evil Tube Zock. Doom. And the Goat God. And Mike Bowman, former student body treasurer. Vote Mike. So the Enemies of the Theater are here to help us rebuild the theater. In any way possible, yes. The enemies of the theater. That's the name of our group, yes. It seems like you'd be more inclined to sabotage the theater than rebuild it. Oh, Becky, grow up. It's just the name, okay? It kind of looks like the evil tube sack is trying to burn down the other side of the stage. Doomed! Doomed! Do you want our help or not? I'm sorry. It just really looks like he's trying to burn it down. Oh, it's so like you to gang up on me. Blast it all. Does anyone have a reliable fire source? You did that on purpose. The enemies of the theater clearly intend to destroy the theater. Out! All of you out right now! You just made a powerful enemy. Uh, everything all right? Sorry, Jerry. I had to release your volunteers. They didn't have good work ethics. Eh, that's all right. As long as I have Larry, we'll have this theater put back together in no time. <laughs> After 70 years of exile, I, Ezra, and my people, the Israelites, have returned to rebuild the temple of the Lord. Though our return is bittersweet, for though we are home, nothing can ever be the same again. Yes, it is both a time of celebration and of mourning. We laugh and cry simultaneously! <laughs> That's coming out of your paycheck, Larry. Stop! Stop! Can we stop, please? What is it, Joey? We can't work in these conditions. It's too dangerous. I can't even hear what I'm saying. I think we should quit. Me too. Me free. Guys, I admit that things are not particularly great at the moment. There's a part of me that wants to quit too. But that's what the whole story of Ezra is about. God is with us, even in events that are beyond our control. We go on the journey together. This is still better than being in detention, isn't it? It is better than detention. A lot better. Lena, please report to the artistic director's office immediately. Lena, to the artistic director's office. The artistic director? That's what they said. Artistic director? Wanted to see me? Please, sit down. 
I wanted to thank you for the tremendous work you've done since returning to the theater. Will we? Yes. I've fired my personal assistant. The job is yours. All you must say is yes. Thank you for the opportunity. No, Lena. Thank you. Sir, our tactics of sabotage and insults have not resulted in the theatre kids quitting like we anticipated. Then we must hit them where they are most vulnerable. Uh, you mean? We will strike at their artistry. Their play will be produced, but you will direct it. Me, sir? Uh, but I've never directed anything before. Exactly. Ah, <sighs> home sweet home. Something seems amiss. <laughs> My left or your left? <laughs> well, that looks pretty much the same. One moment, please. Hold, please. How may I help you? Lena, so you finally took my advice and got a real job, huh? I am a personal assistant to Becky. Becky? Where is she? Where is everyone? Not that Becky, the other Becky, the Becky in charge. The other Becky? What do you mean, the other Becky? Becky, we'll see you now. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's my old teddy bear, Becky. I haven't seen you since I cleaned out my cubby. Wait a second, are you the other Becky? Everyone is following the artistic leadership of my old stuffed animal. God has deserted this theater. Ah, uh, Todd, the name giver. We meet again. You're alive? How long have you been alive? Longer than you can possibly imagine, Todd. Sir, you have a telephone call. Lena, my sweet, a telephone call? Did they say who was calling? I didn't ask. I'm sorry. Never apologize to me, Lena. They're on line two. Go, Todd. Join your compatriots in rehearsal. Or meet your doom. Okie dokie. We perform the story of Esther, the tale of an Israelite orphan girl who won the favor of Xerxes, king of Persia, and became his queen. But first you must understand the life of an Israelite under oppressive rule. Let's push boulders. Yes, boulders. An excellent idea. <laughs> first one to the other side gets a glass of water. Push! Faster! Faster! Ah! Oh! Why are we not pushing boulders? Mr. Tubesack, he needs to go to the nurse. Enough back talk. Everyone fall to your knees before me to re-establish my dominance. Come on, people, let's get bowing. That's bet. Oh, you dare question my authority? Amateurs! All of you amateurs! Why is this happening? Why has God deserted me and my ankle? Lena! The evil tube sock is out of control. Look at Joey's ankle. What can I do? Are you kidding? The artistic director is in love with you. His eyes get all pink and stuff when he talks to you. Maybe you have come to your administrative position for such a time as this. Okay, I'll try. I have half a mind to fire all of you Be and- Be quiet! Joey's hot! Do not invite my wrath! I will- How dare you speak to her like that! Sir, you don't know what you've heard! No, please! Lena, my sweet, I don't want to be wicked. I'm just so lonely. I only took over the theater to get someone's, anyone's attention. You can wear with me as long as you get along with my other stuffed animals. I resign my position as artistic director, effective immediately. Wait a second, who's in charge then? <clears throat> <clears throat> Article 74, Section 12. In the event of an unexpected resignation of the artistic director, head stage manager will fill in until a suitable replacement can be found. What? And as my first act as acting artistic director, I declare myself permanent artistic director of the theater. Ah! 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 Hey, guys.
guys, can we recap on why we're screaming? I sort of zoned out. Becky the teddy bear made Mike Bowman artistic director of the theater by default. Oh my goodness. And as artistic director, I will be making sweeping transformational changes. First off, the Bible is a tired source for drama. I propose we tackle a new subject. A new subject? The greatest society in the entirety of human history. Rome. Rome? What's Rome? An empire that dominated Europe 2,000 years ago. Oh, okay. Mike! Mr. Bowman. Mr. Bowman, all of the grants the theater receives dictate that we must cover God's big story. We are covering God's big story, for Caesar was the son of God, at least according to Caesar. And all this time, I thought it was Jesus. Furthermore, we will implement a new reward and demerit system. I call them Bowman Bucks. At the end of the month, you may bring your Bowman Bucks to the gift shop to exchange for spectacular prizes. Gift shop? Performance alone does not sustain a theater, Becky. Merchandise. Merchandise sustains a theater. Caesar calendars. Caesar lunch boxes. Caesar snow globes. You can't be serious. You are now at... Negative five Bowman Bucks, Becky. I don't care about your Bowman Bucks. Perhaps you will when I inform you you can exchange them for a free slice in our soon-to-be-finished basement pizzeria! You can't buy me off with pizza. Negative ten Bowman Bucks. Good. Negative thirty. I don't care. Becky, stop it. You really don't want to drop any lower than thirty Bowman Bucks. The Bowman interest will kill you. And Miss Frederick holds fast at negative thirty. Now, I must depart, as I am late for the grand opening of the newly renovated Bowman Theatre East across town. Another theater? Awesome! Yes, in the spirit of the Roman Empire, we will continue to expand the Bowman Empire until it blankets the entire Earth. I appoint the evil tube sock as governor in my absence. Um, the evil tube sock got violently knitted into a sweater. Uh, very well. Then I appoint the evil tube sock's evil twin brother. Doomed. And Todd, you will be his enforcer. It's all I've ever wanted. Bring forth my chariot! See you in two weeks, to the front lines. Yeah! The great and glorious Mike Bowman has decreed our next production concern the life and times of the great and glorious Caesar Augustus. The main roles will be cast out of New York City. You will all play non-speaking background extras. Thank you. You heard him. We better start getting into character. So we don't even get to act in the shows anymore? There are no small parts, Becky. I'm not wasting my time on unchallenging material with the sole purpose of glorifying the Romans. Tina, Joey, Lena, you're with me on this, right? We've got to fight this. In the spirit of self-preservation and additional Bowman Bucks, I vote to follow our occupiers blindly and without question. No, we have to rebel against the new artistic administration. Is rebellion really necessary? Yeah, won't some random inanimate object eventually come to life and tell us what to do? I feel like if it was going to happen, it would have happened already. <gasps> that war crate just moved! Never mind. False alarm. I, Octavian, will be emperor as my slain uncle was before me. Though you may practice your old customs, all must worship Caesar as God. Uh, uh, let me take that again, please. I'm just gonna go ahead and back it up here. I, Octavian, will be emperor. Oh, no, let me take that again, please. I, Octavian, will be emperor. <coughs> Actually, could we get catering in here, please? I am just fat. Uh -huh, Becky. How's rehearsal? What am I supposed to do, Jerry? I feel like everything is turned upside down. We're supposed to be telling God's story, not Caesar's. Well, Becky, in times like these, we're called to be a people of hope. But I can't just sit here and hope, Jerry. I need to do something. Hope doesn't mean sitting back and wishing for the best. God doesn't let you off that easy. God is always calling you to action. Hope is just the fuel. Say, what about the black box stage? The what? The smaller, more intimate second stage in this building. There's a second stage in this building? Yep, yeah, it's right over there. Maybe you could stage your little god plays in there. Todd, do you know what this means? No, I do not. It means there's hope.